Hi there. In today's video, we'll discuss how to create a realistic Chrome text effect in Photoshop. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to open an image. You can download this image from the link in the description should you want to practice along. Also, you don't have to necessarily use this image. You can use any image that is bright and colorful. Now that I have my image here, I'm going to go to Filter and then Distort and select the zigzag option. From the pop-up window, let's change the amount to 20 and ridges to 5 and update the style to Pond Ripple. And you shall find all these settings instantly getting updated to your image. Don't worry too much about the image at this point as it will look a little weird because we need to use this effect on a text anyway. Next, what we need to do is go to Edit and then Define Pattern and then type Reflection Pattern in the Name field. So basically, we're going to use this image just as a reflection pattern once we have uh, applied other settings to other text. Our next task is to create a background. And for that, let's go to File and then New. I'm going to create a new document with the dimensions 950 by 650 pixels and hit Create. Now I need to import a texture and then place it on top of this white artboard that we've just created. So let's go to File and then Open and locate the image from the computer. Once the image is here, click, hold and drag it to the artboard. You'll find that only part of the texture is showing on the white artboard. It's because the texture image is too large to fit onto the artboard. So let's just zoom out a bit and uh, go to Edit, and then Free Transform. You can even use the shortcut Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC to resize the texture. Actually, we need to zoom out a bit more. Now, using one of the corner handles, drag inward to resize the image to fit onto the artboard. Now, what we need to do is add a gradient effect to our texture so that the center of the image is lighter than the four corners. We're doing this because we'll place our text in the center and uh, it will complement well sitting on a lighter shade and surrounded by darker tones. So double click on the textures layer to open the layer style and then select the gradient overlay tab on the left. Now update the blending mode to multiply. Change the gradient style to radial Scale it to 150%. Now click on the gradient and a pop-up window will appear. Click once on the white slider on the right, which will activate the color panel in the bottom. Now click on the color panel to reveal the color picker panel and update the color code to 75, 75 and 75 and hit OK. Similarly, click on the black slider on the extreme left and update the color code to 0F, 0F and 0F. And then hit OK to come out of the color picker. And then hit OK once more to close the gradient editor. At this point, you could see that our texture is darker in the center and lighter at the four corners. And uh, this is not what we wanted. We wanted the exact opposite. So all we need to do is check the reverse option and it will reverse the colors as per our requirement. And uh, you can hit OK then. Next task is to create the text layers. So I'm going to grab the text tool and turn the caps lock on and type in platinum. And then change the font to Poppins Bold. You can use any thick font you have because the effect won't be visible on a thin font. So it's always better to use any thick font of your choice. Now using Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC, I'm going to increase the font size and place it right at the center. From the Properties panel on the right, let's also change the kerning to Optical and the text will adjust itself accordingly. 
At this point, let's also change the font color to a shade of gray. So pick a shade of gray of your choice. I think I'll go with this one. Perfect. Next, drag the text layer to create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel to duplicate it. And then change the fill of the duplicate text layer to 0% from the layers panel. Now select the original text layer and double click on it to reveal the layer style pop-up window. Now most of our task is going to happen here and you can find how layering our text with different styles will develop our text eventually. We're going to start with bevel and emboss. So click on the bevel and emboss tab on the left to reveal its settings. First of all, update the size to one pixel. Also, I suggest you to focus on your text as you update the settings so that next time you want to apply any such effect, you'd know the functions of each settings and options beforehand. Next, uncheck the global light option. Also, change the angle to 30 degrees, altitude to 16. Check the anti-aliased box. Ensure that the highlight mode is set to 100% opacity and so should be the shadow mode. Right below the blend and emboss tab on the left is the contour tab. Click on it and in the settings, click on the contour drop down to reveal a pop-up menu and update the presets to Cove Shallow. Ensure that the anti-aliased box is checked and range is set to 100%. Now select the Stroke tab on the left and update the size to 1 pixel. Position to Inside and Fill Type to Gradient. Now click on the gradient to reveal another pop-up from the different options, go to Chrome's Gradient option. You might not have it with you, but don't worry, I'll put a link in the description for you to download this and for free as well. Also, I'll let you know at the end of this video how to import it to Photoshop. So once you click on the Chrome's Gradient, you'll find a lot of gradient thumbnails, but we're looking for a specific one. So to reveal the name of the gradient, click on the small cog on top and change the display option to text only. You'll find that all the options have now changed to text. So select the stainless steel XX option and hit OK. Focus on how our text is developing with each settings so let's move on to inner shadow option on the left and update the opacity to 35%. Also uncheck the use global light box. Update the angle to minus 115 degrees. Distance to 3. Size to 7. And choke to 0%. Next, click on Inner Glow option on the left. Change the Blend Mode to Vivid Light. Opacity to 100%. Click on the Color Picker and uh, update the color code to F4, F2, E7 and hit OK. Let the choke be 0% and uh, size 3 pixels. Next, click on Gradient Overlay option on the left. In the settings, check the Differ box. Update the Blend Mode to Color and Opacity to about 90%. Ensure that the Reverse box is checked. Now click on the Gradient drop-down and if you can't see the names of the gradient, click on the small cog on the right of the list and select Text Only option. And then select the Gradient Stove Pipe 70 from the list. Also change the gradient style to Linear and then click on Pattern Overlay tab on the left. In the settings, click on Pattern drop-down and click on the cog on the right to select Text Only option and select Reflection Pattern. 
This is the same reflection pattern that we created in the beginning of this tutorial using the image, if you remember. You can even find the thumbnail of that image in the pattern option once selected. Now change the scale to 50%. Also update the blend mode to normal and uh, opacity to 100%. Let's move on to outer glow tab on the left. Update the blend mode to multiply. Opacity to 35% and then click on the color picker and uh, update the color code to 40, 40, and 40. Now update the size to 21 pixels. Next, click on drop shadow option on the left and in the settings, update the blending mode to normal, opacity to 100%, angle to 120 degrees, distance to 5 pixels, spread to 10%, and size 10 pixels. Also update the noise to 0%. Now we need to add another drop shadow, so click on the plus button on the drop shadow option and it will be duplicated. Now in the settings, update the blend mode to multiply, opacity to 80%, angle to 132 degrees and uncheck the use global light box then change distance to 17 spread to 0 and size to 38 now go back to pattern overlay option and then click drag the pattern inside the text to move it around until you get a result you like Next, let's style the duplicate text layer that we created earlier. So double click the layer to reveal the layer style option and uh, click on inner glow tab on the left and in the settings update the blend mode to linear light, opacity to 20%, click on the color picker and update the color code to E1, E1 and E1. Next, update the technique to precise, size to 5 pixels, and then click on the contour drop down and from the preset change it to curve deep and hit OK. Now click on the gradient overlay option on the left and in the settings change the blend mode to soft light, angle to 80 degrees and then click on the gradient drop down and go to the chromes folder we got introduced to earlier and select the steel pipe 10 option from here and hit OK. And lastly go to outer glow option on the left and in the settings update the blend mode to color dodge opacity to 50% and click on the color picker and update the color code to EC EC and EC and hit OK. Ensure that the size is set to 21 pixels and hit OK once again. All right, now click on the create new fill or adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel and choose gradient map. Check the dither box in the properties panel on the right and then click on the gradient to reveal the gradient editor. Double click on the left slider and update the color code to 55, 4B, 70. Then take your cursor to the middle of the gradient bar and click once to add another slider here and click on it to update the color code to 857177. Next, click on the slider on the right and update the color code to D8, A082, and then hit OK. With this gradient map layer selected, click on the blend mode and change it to soft light. And then change its opacity to 20%. 
and congratulations, you've successfully created the Chrome text effect in Photoshop. Optionally, you can select all the layers using the command or control key and right click and merge layers so that the layers panel doesn't look too busy. And before we part, let me also explain how to import the gradient pack like I mentioned earlier. I'll be sharing a link in the description for you to download the Chrome's gradient we have used in this tutorial. So just follow the link and download it and practice along. To import it to Photoshop, click anywhere on the artboard using the move tool and then go to the FX option in the bottom of the layers panel and select blending options from the list and then go to gradient overlay tab. And then in the settings, click on the gradient drop down once and then click on the small cog on the right and from the drop down list, click on import gradients and then locate the gradient file from your computer and hit open and your gradient file will be imported and ready to be used. All right, guys, that concludes our session today. I hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something from it. So do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again on Thursday, goodbye and thanks for watching.